Hello friends, this is Jim here with Science Talk. And uh, this video segment, I'm going to discuss an uh, issue about biodiversity. And this is actually going to look at areas that are supposedly set aside to protect uh, you know, ecosystems, habitats, and wildlife. And what's ba basically being uh, learned is that these areas are lacking proper policing, proper uh, enforcement. So um, first, a couple of papers I'm going to share with you. The first appears in the journal Frontiers in Ecology and the Environment. And researchers here looked at a sample of more than 2,100 protected areas in Africa, South America, and Asia to see which can be determined to be sufficiently funded and staffed. Now, basically what's going on is that three quarters of the world protected areas, you know, set aside to protect birds, fish, amphibians, that's reptiles, plants, it's, you get the idea. May, you know, are basically not being properly uh, enforced, not being properly cared for. When it gets to marine reserves, that's much more difficult and it really falls off there. And it, over the course of looking at these uh, 2,100 areas, we'll, we'll talk about 12,000 species of amphibians, birds, mammals. Fewer than one in 10 are safely within properly policed and cared for uh, reserves and parks. Only 22.4% of all of these areas that they looked at could claim to be sufficiently or well resourced. And we're not even, uh, you know, so if you're not properly policing them, you have got poacher problems and other illegal activities. And so th this study came out after the UN uh, warned that up to a million species around the globe could be risk of imminent extinction. Researchers also found that many areas declared protection zones for the wilderness were being reclassified, degraded, or exploited by industry and agribusiness. So James Watson of the University of Queensland, Australia, and the Wildlife Conservation Society states, this analysis shows that most protected areas are poorly funded and therefore failing to protect wildlife on a scale sufficient to stave off the global decline in biodiversity. Nations need to do much more to ensure protected areas fulfill their role as a major tool to mitigate the growing biodiversity crisis. Researchers identified close to 12,000 species of birds, amphibians, and mammals that might have natural ranges that included protected areas and made estimates of those that could be sure of properly protected areas within their range, and they found that this represented 4% of amphibians, 8% of birds, 9% of mammal species in the sample, which is five times lower than the target protected areas were supposed to meet. Okay, it's no, it's no, it should not come as a surprise to people paying attention that there is a biodiversity crisis out there. You know, it, it's been confirmed. What are some of the uh, causes of it? Uh, the explosion in uh, human population. With, uh, more and more people keep adding uh, to the planet. Uh, then you have, uh, and even with that, you got the advancement of global economies, and then, of course, uh, climate change. Now, I stated in, uh, you know, I did in a couple of videos talking about carrying capacity, human uh, population numbers are not sustainable. One of the things that happens with increased human population is that they keep uh, using up land to meet the needs of, you know, housing, food, conducting business. And when that happens, wildlife suffers. And that's, that's all, that's part of it. That's related to what's going on here. So, uh, driven with that, of course, we got the climate change. The other problem is when you take out these organisms, 
you also affect the scavengers, the detritivores, those that decompose organic material. In other words, recycling of nutrients slows down. And therefore, primary product productivity will be adversely affected eventually, if not soon. And studies have shown that this is already happening. Researchers have also repeatedly established that properly protected wilderness areas offer a way to slow, mitigate the effects of climate change. And uh, continue new studies keep identifying uh, the you know the rush to towards extinction of many organisms. So in another paper reported in the journal Nature Ecology and Evolution uh, reveals that since uh, 1900, at least 571 species of seed plant have gone extinct. Now they've also said that almost as many have been erroneously declared extinct and then been rediscovered. That means their numbers are probably at a level that the extinction could still most likely take place. On paper, around 15% of the global terrestrial surfaces, 12% of marine areas are under a national protection somewhere. And nations supposedly on track to match a global commitment to protect 17% of land surface, 10% of the seas by 2020, under an internationally agreed strategic plan for biodiversity. Okay, so why does the land area increase by 2% and the marine areas decrease by 2%? Why is that? I don't know, but that's, it, that percentage should increase instead of being decreased. So, um, Researchers basically uh, state that if the nations can claim to be on target, that doesn't mean the wild things the protected areas are intended to protect are very much safer. While continued expansion of the world's protected areas is necessary, a shift in emphasis from quantity to quality is critical to effectively respond to the current biodiversity crisis. I would argue both. Quality and quantity. And Professor Watson warned that without such a shift, conservationists could risk sending a false message that sufficient resources are being committed to biodiversity protection. I'm not sure if a false message is being sent, but I think studies that examine the biodiversity, keep doing the population senses, uh, need to be on an ongoing basis to constantly evaluate uh, what the status is of the of populations and of course, overall the, the overall biodiversity. Down to two major factors: uh, exponential human growth, right? that then tears up the land, you know, for mining, for housing, for uh, growing food, crops, cattle, what have you. That affects wildlife. You lose their, you know, they lose their habitat, and then of course the climate change that comes with you know, all the industrialization that comes with these sorts of expansions. So um, my view, the issue for biodiversity is really not looking very good. It's decreasing. We are in the middle of the sixth or seventh mass extinction. And uh, overall, not good. And of course, don't forget, this will imperil humans' ability to continue as a species. Thank you for your time. Hello, folks. This is Jim here with Science Talk, asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.